I, and, and Lance, if you can, Lance, if you have that information, I'd like to share with this because if share, that's uh, share yeah, that information. Yeah, I'd like to get that. Native Edge, though. <laughs> Next. Okay. Thank you. Um, so for the last four years, I ran the largest Native organization in the country that represented Native-owned federal contractors, did almost $15 billion a year, the membership does. We've reached out to all of you folks, all the big business. If you want to work with Native federal contractors, the Cherokees of the world, S&Ks of the world, all the, our, our members are concentrated in one location, but nobody wants to come visit. Okay, so I'm going to call you out there that Heidi Franklin right over here, she's not here, is still with NACA. I just left the other day as the executive director. Those are the most successful native businesses in this country belong to that association and have a proven track record. Some of them are billion dollar ANCs, some of them are hundred million dollar corporations that would be perfect subcontractors or primes where you would be the sub on contracts. So they're there, you gotta look for it. The native edge thing, NACA started that. This organization started the NACA BD portal four years ago where we created a portal for big businesses and native businesses to engage along with African American businesses in collaboration with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the United States Black Chamber of Commerce. The Native Edge just kind of piggybacked on that and they're going to carry forward and do the same thing. So that's existed, they exist, that platform's there. The last thing I would like to ask, and this is a question now that I've been on my soapbox. Um, as the chairman of the board of the Potawai Business Development Corporation, on eight different occasions, we've had very successful and well-run subsidiary companies try to get into your supplier diversity chains. When I say you, not you individually, but in commercial business. And every single time we've been told, well, you need to go get certified. There's a disconnect, which I would like to know if you guys have any thoughts about this, is tribally owned subsidiary companies often are not, the day-to-day -day management is not a tribal member. Those human resources right now in this generation, maybe in the next or the one after that, may exist, but they don't now. There's tribally owned, there's native businesses that I could own that I could get into your chain because I manage the company. But the Forest County Potawatomi has cybersecurity companies, IT companies that have proven track records, nine, ten years of business, tens of millions of dollars. We can't get in because we're not run day to day. You guys are missing out on a whole lot of quality contractors out there that could supply these goods and services. Many of them are also these federal contractors that have proven their wares in the federal marketplace, which are certified through the 8A program as native because they're tribally owned, not necessarily day-to-day -day management. But in the commercial setting, where the real opportunities are, it's almost impossible for a tribally owned subsidiary company to get into your supplier diversity chain. How do you, in your mind, how would you address that situation? I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, start, and I, I appreciate that question. Um, and again, as you well know, these guys don't set that definition as um, uh, owned and operated. Uh, so, so that's an issue because they, they basically go by what, say, NMSDC lays down that in, so, in, in that regard. But you mentioned an important point. Those are organizations which are 8A certified. Am I correct in saying that? And I'm not going to speak for them but I'll speak from my experience. In my eyes, yes, NMSDC and where's Fred and, and, and all my counterparts, that is one certification, but as federal contractors, I would venture a guess that they would allow you into their supply chain as such and report you as an 8A firm. Am I correct in saying, yes, saying that? That's what should be. In the federal space, yes. Yes. Yeah. But I see you've been, you've transitioned from 8A, you are tribally owned, that's clear, you wouldn't have gotten away with it through the SBA certification. Why can't that count for something? Because mm -hmm. it's all ultimately up to IBM. It, exactly. Who's going to be in their pool or not? Exactly. And, and so if you have a proven tribally owned company that, that, that graduated from the 8A and has moved into commercial space maybe, why couldn't that be enough to get into your channel? Go ahead. Why wouldn't it certify? They can't. 
They can't certify. Because we don't have they're, not, they're not the day-to-day -day operations owner. As, as per the definition, you have to be owned and operated. And in that scenario, the, they are not owning and operating. Yeah. What about the parent company? We want to do business with you, but you've got to get this certification. We yeah. love you. We, do, we, did, we know how to do the BD and shape even the procurement, okay? okay? But we don't have a bunch of working grads walking around on the res that can run these companies, right. okay? And so we can't get certified. So, oh, sorry, guys. You yeah. Know, and that, to me, in my opinion, that, and again, I don't mean to do this, but I've been doing it for a while, but that becomes a company decision. You know, that yeah. becomes... It's not on our pay grade, yep. unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, but, you know, we can deliver that message. Yeah. I'm not even on the commercial side. Yeah. But, but, but I've worked in this space for a long time. Yep. And I'm also trained as a Georgetown University Law Center lawyer. But let me say this. I agree with you 100%. And it's wrong, and it needs to be changed. Yep. And the only way it's going to be changed if is people like us in our positions take that message back to our organizations and start to, to ask the question, why? Yes. I do. And, and, and this ties back into Andrew's earlier point about challenging them. These are, these are things that, it, and not to get on a soapbox, a number of times small business will not ask that important question to folks like this because they don't want to upset the apple cart on an opportunity. But we're to the point where you have to challenge. You can't, in my eyes, you can't just accept, okay, I'll give me your business card, I'll get back to you and re re register on my website. No, no, no. I need a little bit more than that. I need to know why or why can't this be done. So my message, and Andrew kind of said, you, you need to start challenging to get the answers that you feel you need. I believe that's important. So.